Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn about simple collision detections in 3JS. So when my player cube intersects with the sphere we can detect that collision. And when my player cube intersects the other cube we can detect that collision. And when my player cube contains the other cube then we can detect that collision. So we're going to look at intersect collisions and contain collisions in 3JS. So 3GS gives us some shapes we can use for collision detection. And these are the bounding box and the bounding sphere. So the bounding box is a box 3 and accepts two parameters, the minimum and the maximum. The minimum is the lower boundary and the maximum is the upper boundary and they're both vector 3. So they both have x, y, and z coordinates. The bounding sphere is a sphere this sphere accepts two arguments, the center coordinate and the radius. So you have your regular 3D cube and then you have to create a bounding box and the bounding box kind of overlays your 3D shape. And it's the same with the bounding sphere. You have a regular 3D sphere that you can create and then you create a bounding sphere and that bounding sphere overlays the 3D sphere. Let's look at the collision types of bounding shapes. So intersects checks for does this object intersect with another object? You could think of it like touching. Does one bounding shape touch another bounding shape? And if it does, then it's true. And when we check for contains, does this object contain the entire other object? So even though they're touching and they're not containing, then it's false. So for containing, the one object has to be entirely within the other object. And then that gives a true result. Let's look at the code now and see how this works. I'm just going to quickly go over my layout before we get into it. I'm just importing my modules here. Then I'm creating my scene and setting a background color to sky blue. Now I'm creating a camera, setting its position, and setting its target at the origin. So it's looking at the origin. And here I'm creating my render and enabling my shadow map. And I'm creating two lights, an ambient light, which casts no shadows, and a direction light so I can cast shadows. So let's start building our shapes. Let's start with cube 1. So cube 1 will just be a regular 3D cube. We're going to create a geometry and a material and pass that into the mesh. And then we're going to create a cube 1 bounding box object and create the bounding box for that cube. So for cube 1, I'm just creating a mesh and passing in my box geometry and a material. And then I'm setting its position and setting the cast shadow property and receive shadow property to the true. Okay, so that's just the regular cube. Now I'm creating my bounding box in the cube1bb object. New3.box3, that's going to be the bounding box. And I'm creating two three vector threes. One's going to be the minimum value, and one's going to be the maximum value. How am I going to get these values? I'm going to get them from the cube1 geometry. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to use the set from object method. So cube1bb set from object and which object am I setting it from? This cube 1 object. And if I console log this cube 1 BB object, it says box 3 and if I open it it has a maximum value and a minimum value as vector 3's and that's our bounding box. So it's pretty easy to create a bounding box. You just create the original object and then create a bounding box object and get the bounding box from that object. Cube 2 is our player cube. The player can use the arrow keys to move this cube around. So I'm following the same pattern. I'm creating the cube 2 object by creating a mesh and passing in the box geometry and the material. So I'm going to create my cube 2 bounding box using the same method. I'm creating a new 3 box 3 and I'm passing in two new 3 vector 3's. They're empty but I'm going to get them from the original cube 2. So my cube 2 bounding box is going to be set from this object cube 2. And now my cube 2 bounding box is created. Okay, now we're going to do a ball. A ball is a little bit different because it's not a box. Creating a ball is still the same way. I'm going to call it ball 1. I'm creating a mesh and I'm passing in a sphere geometry with a radius and a material. Now for the bounding sphere, I'm calling it ball 1 BB and I'm creating a new 3 sphere and I'm passing in the position of this ball 1 object and the radius, the same radius that I used to create this original ball one object. 
and now I have a new bounding sphere. And if I console log this bounding sphere, here it says sphere, and it gives the center as a vector 3. That's the position and the radius, and that is our bounding sphere. So now we have a bounding box for the two cubes and a bounding sphere for this ball. So now we just have to detect the collisions and program the key controls so you can move the cube. Here I'm creating the ground plane and I'm rotating it minus 90 degrees so the top is on top and I'm setting the receive shadow property to true so shadows can be cast on the ground. And then I'm passing the two cubes, the ball and the plane into the scene. Okay, here's my key control function. So I'm using the arrow keys, document on key down. So whenever a key is pressed down, we're gonna move cube two. So if the key code is equal to 37, that's the left arrow key. We're gonna change the X position by subtracting one. If the key code is 39, so if the right arrow key is pressed, we're going to change the X position by adding one. If the upper arrow key is pressed, then we're going to change the Z position by subtracting one. And if the down arrow key is pressed, we're going to change the Z position by adding one. And here I'm just creating my orbit controls and I'm calling my animate loop. So let's look at our animate loop and see what we have to do here. Okay, the first thing we have to do is update the position of the bounding box. Now, why is that? Now you'll see the bounding box is being printed in the console. And if I open one up, it has a max of X minus 2.5 and a minimum X position of minus 3.5. Now, if I press the arrow keys, let's see if the bounding box changes. And you see it's still the same. The bounding box has not moved. Even though this cube is moved, the bounding box has not moved. That's because the bounding box is a separate object we need to update the position of the bounding box to the cube position. So that's the first thing we need to do. For these stationary objects, they're never gonna move, so we don't need to worry about it. But for moving objects, we need to move the bounding box with the object. So that's what this line does. Where cube two is in this matrix world, I need to update this information and put it into the cube two bounding box. So I'm just updating the change in position, the transformation of cube two and putting that into the cube two bounding box. Now let's console log the cube two bounding box and see what it's showing. Okay, so now it's still at X minus 2.5 and X minus 3.5 for the max and min. So let's press the arrow keys and see if it changes. And you see it's changed. The bounding box now has a max at the X position of 10.5 and a min at the X position at 9.5. So this is working. So now the bounding box is following this player cube. And that's what we want. We need, the, we need the bounding box to follow the shape. Okay, so for all moving bodies, you're gonna have to update that object's matrix world position and put it into your bounding box object. Okay, now we're gonna run a, a check collisions function. And this function will check for the collisions and let's see how that works. So this check collisions function has two parts, the intersecting test or touching test and the contains test. So let's look at the intersecting test first. So if it's going to be bounding box versus bounding box, you're going to use the intersects box method. So is the cube two bounding box intersecting with the cube one bounding box? And it's going to be a true or false. It's a Boolean. If it's true, it's going to run this animation. If it's false, it's going to show the normal opacity for that cube, cube one. And animation one, we're changing the cube one transparent property. We're changing the cube one opacity property of the material. And we're changing the cube one color property of that material. And for the player and the sphere bounding shapes, if the player's boundary box is intersecting with the ball's sphere, then we're gonna run animation two. Else, we're gonna set the ball's material opacity to one, which is its normal appearance. And in the animation, animation two, we're changing the ball's transparent property, we're changing the ball's opacity property, and we're changing the ball's color property. Okay, so these are the intersect box and intersect sphere methods, box on box, box on sphere. Now for the contains test, the contains test only checks box on box. It does not check box on sphere. I'm checking if the player's boundary box contain box, contains box is the method, 
contains the other cube's boundary box. If that one boundary box is within the other boundary box, I'm going to change the Y scale of the player cube. If it's not, if it's false, then the player's Y scale will be normal, which is 1. So that's how you can do simple collision detection in 3JS.